Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match stream and possibly just one replay tonight. I'm not sure. Maybe two. We'll see. It is a weeknight, so they usually are the shorter games, shorter casts. We're gonna have at least Anarchid versus Hokomoko on Doom Patrol. A replay that was sent to me recently apparently is actually a relatively even game despite the LO difference. We'll see how that plays out, and that will be exactly what's happening right now. So, Doom Patrol, before we start the game, just go over the map slightly. I don't know if I've ever shown this map. I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure this is brand new for most people, at least. So, this is this is the map. It's deceptively large. It's about the same size as... Actually, I think it's slightly smaller than Red Comet. It's around the same size-ish. But yeah, this water in the center tends to be kind of deceptive. There is Reclaim in the center as well. There's good 250 metal or so in the center. Not sure about energy, but there's quite a lot of that too. If you look at the entire center for reclaim, it's about 300 metal and 3,000 energy. And of course it's the corners as well, which has some energy. But overall, this map tends to be a little bit deceptive. It's also unfortunately textured. You can't really see where the metal spots are. This map is one of those maps where it's a little bit difficult to tell what to do sometimes. It is just not a map you see very often. You think it'd be straightforward because of its size, but then because of the hills you're not, and the water, you're not sure you're supposed to use vehicles. A direct path isn't very easy to do. It's possible. The water is not that deep, but it's still not the easiest thing to do, not the easiest thing to think of. And vehicles are surprisingly not that useful given the size and relative shape of the map. It's just not flat enough. I mean, they can work, but it's it's trickier than it might look at first glance. Anyway, both players are actually going for Klugibot Factory, so we'll go from there. Okamoko on the southeast side of the map going for Kalukibot and very quickly getting up their whole economy as usual. Going for five glaives at first, very aggressive opening, while Anarchy on the other hand going for a single glaive before getting the Rector, or Conjurer, I mean. And Anarchy as well going for a much lighter power infrastructure. Okamoko on the other hand, they just have more planned out. Anarchy just not quite planning out everything quite yet, but they will get to that as soon as that's done. Going for a quick morph as well, while Anarchy, actually, are they even going for the... Conjurer's not even being built yet. No, Anarchid has nothing being built. They are relying entirely on their commander and morphing right off the bat. Probably have an early Nanolith. While Hokomoko, on the other hand, is... Well, they are just continuing along, building more and more glaives. Like I said, being very aggressive. Hokomoko attacking along pretty much all angles. Anarchid might intercept this glaive. I think Anarchid does not spot it. And no, it doesn't look like Anarchid has... Anarchid hasn't. Hokomoko, however, has... Is very suspicious. Hokomoko does not have radar. They just happen to spot the... They spot Anarchid's glaive... Right at the last second. And their own Glaive's going in for a minor raid. The defender should be able to block that. I mean, one defender takes out one and a half Glaive's. This is not going to be a big deal. And Anarchid's commander as well. Light Particle Beam and an, indeed a Nano Lathe. So that's exactly what the commander was doing. Basically turning into a worker all its own. Although more Conjurers coming up as well. And Anarchid's Glaive... Does go down as well. I should probably turn off economy view, although admittedly it's nice to see where the metal extractors are. If this map ever gets redone, those metal extractors or those metal positions need to be textured properly. Bit of a big deal. Anyway, Anarchade is setting up pretty quickly. Well, Hokomoko, on the other hand, just now getting their own conjurer. And Anarchade, I believe, will be slightly ahead economically. Hokomoko going towards the center while Anarchade is spreading out. They're sending their commander down south. They're sending their Conjurer over to the east of their main base, that is. That is something that you often see at the higher level of play. Very frequently you see them build one one or two constructors, send them off in one direction, send the commander off in another direction. Just spread out as much as possible. When you start in a corner, that is a great idea. That's a great way to start out. Anakin also going for a very early scythe. This is really surprising. I think Anakin might be... Well, let's see. Anakin hasn't really seen Hokomoko's base. I mean, their glaive got this far. Scythe would definitely allow them to see that, and of course, if they get in that far, it would also mean that they can deal a lot of damage, because Scythes are actually pretty, they are pretty threatening. However, the Scythe will be revealed to get rid of this Glaive, defending the Conjurer, and actually that worked out pretty well. That was a decent raid. That Glaive did some damage. It got rid of the Defender, got rid of the Conjurer, it got rid of one of Hokomoko's Glaives. Admittedly, this is all in Hokomoko's territory, so it is still a bit of an advantage for Hokomoko. But it slows things down. Well, Hokomoko, on the other hand, is going pretty quickly to Rocco's. Interesting, not wanting to play in the Raider game for too long. Going to Rocco's instead, just trying to bash down the defenses directly. 
And with the commander outside of the base, there's only these two defenders. And that Rocco could tank those shots pretty well. The Glaives can't, but the Rocco can survive a full defender salvo. It's close. It's really close, but it, yeah. 415 damage. They'd be left with 35 health. Actually, a little less than that, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, about 35 health. So yeah, Rocco going in there would basically tear things apart, while Anarchid, on the other hand, decides just to also bypass that. Goes for Warriors. I don't think Anarchid is aware... I, Anarchid cannot be aware of that Rocco. There is no way they can be aware of the Rocco. They are aware of Rocco's now. The Scythe has seen it. Incidentally, going for a nice mech kill there. But yeah, they have seen the Rocco's now. Anarchid... Yeah, Anarchid, not surprisingly, has... Actually, surprisingly, has not switched out. They let the Warrior build up. Admittedly, they do have a Scythe coming in, which will get rid of the Rocco here. But yeah, Warriors... Warriors lose pretty hard to Rocco's. I mean, it's the standard Raider Skirmisher Riot Triangle. And we will see that in action right now as Rocco nicely kites out that warrior. That warrior has to retreat, although it does mask the Scythe coming in here. Anarchy just keeping that alive as the Scythe approaches... Well, without any... It's not going to have any obstructions anyway. Really, the Rocco's not aware of it, and the Rocco does go down! Very handily. Hokomoko loses that Rocco for basically nothing, but at the same time, Hokomoko is taking a lot of the map, expanding very aggressively. There are scythes running around everywhere, and Hokomoko is paying them almost no mind, building a bunch of raiders to spot them out. Hokomoko had a few ticks. Yeah, there's that tick. Hokomoko does have. How many ticks does Hokomoko have? Has the one. Yeah, Hokomoko's ticks are something that they've been building for a while now. They hadn't even. I think they started queuing them up before they saw the scythes in the first place. But that's still pretty good to have. Laying those around makes it just a bit harder to get in. On this map, it's a little bit tricky. There aren't really any obvious choke points. Though there aren't any obvious places to put ticks. But still, having a nice spread of units just just so that size can't really get around. Just to keep them honest. That's always a good thing to have. And the Rocco's rather handily... Well, one of the Rocco's is able to survive get, to get rid of the defenders. The other Rocco... Actually, both the Rocco's do die. And tick out of position, unfortunately, for it. But still... Some nice assaults from Hokomoko. Hokomoko is really dealing a lot of damage here. And they are not letting Anarchid get anything for free. Well, the Anarchid's kind of doing the same, but the Scythes really aren't dealing a whole lot of damage. I think Anarchid has been just trying to... I don't know. I wouldn't call it playing nice. I mean, Anarchid is not really playing nice by using Scythes, but at the same time, they are spending a lot of metal on something that doesn't cover a lot of territory. And thus far, it has not been working that well, actually. Quite a few of the Scythes have been going down. Like, three or four Scythes already have just gone down and dealt... Almost no damage. Maybe one metal extractor? And a couple glaives on defense? I mean, Anarchid has been winning the defensive conflicts, but the offensive conflicts, no, not at all. And Hokomoko, while they have been forced to build some defenses, at this point, the sides are pretty even. Anarchid has a slight economic advantage, but not by much. And one of the, another one of those sides goes down. That's in Hokomoko's territory, by the way. All this is in Hokomoko's territory, and Hokomoko is reclaiming. They are doing very much the right thing. They're reclaiming all of those wreckages coming in here. And just getting a stable economy. Both players are actually low on energy, and that is what Hokomoko is dealing with. Anarchid, however, they are dealing with energy in their... No, they aren't. They're getting caretakers in the main base. They are getting energy over to the southwest with a defender nest near there. I'm not sure that Hokomoko really cares. That's not the most strategically useful place in the map. There's, okay, six metal. Not bad. But the main base, where the factory is, is completely undefended, or has two defenders. That's it. And there's a nice little valley here that... Hokomoko has a very easy way of getting through. As long as they can get through this warrior, they can get through. And they have the Rockos to get through the warrior with. It's really not a problem. So I don't know what Anarchid is really planning on doing here, because... Right now, Anarchid has just been scythe harassing everything, and to very little avail. I think Anarchid might be sandbagging slightly. Or at least might have been sandbagging slightly. I don't see this as being the way that... Because Anarchid... Well, it's just high-level play in general. You'd be going for Raider Phase far longer. The size, not a bad idea. But this many sites, especially given how they've been working out so far. And especially given how much Hokomoku has been building lightweight units to basically screen for sites. That's not going to work out especially well. Even on a map this large, even on a map this sparse. It's still not going to work out especially well. The only thing that Anarchid has going for them is that Hokomoku is probably going to go for the southwest. And while they are harassing around the map, like the northeast over here, they're probably going to go for the southwest and try to get through this defender nest, which is the worst thing they could do. Best thing they could do, really, is to get rid of this area here or just hit the main base directly. Though hitting the main base directly, normally not a good idea. Normally it's a very heavily defended area of the map. 
and trying to kill that is usually the easiest way to lose. So I don't think Hokomoko is going to do that. Given the way Hokomoko has been probing with their glaives, I'm guessing Hokomoko is actually planning on attacking to the north. Or at the very least trying to figure out what is coming down from the north, what Anarchist is trying to do, because Hokomoko is also expanding that way. And they are still neck and neck. I mean, the first player to win a decent engagement is going to have a sizable advantage, but at this point, neither player has really gotten much of an advantage. Hokomoko has been getting a bit more reclaim to work with, and Hokomoko's commander getting into a bit of a fight. Bit of a scrap, doesn't really matter too much, but there are three sides coming in. That is going to be a big deal. Hokomoko's commander is going to go down as a result of those three sides, and nothing stops it. Those three sides take it out, and a couple conjurers are going to have to come up there to basically make up for the commander. Make up for that loss in build power, especially given that there is a juicy commander here. All this reclaim. I mean, how much reclaim is this anyway? Where, Where is a conjurer when I need one? Oh, I have it selected. Perfect. All right. 1,000 metal. 1,000 metal all to Hokomoko after that attack. Although they did lose their commander, bit of a big deal. As... Okay, that's just a tick. Which didn't really do much, unfortunately. Like I said, this map, not the easiest way to use ticks. Although that scythe is going to reveal itself pretty shortly. There it goes. However, that is not what the Rockers are paying attention to. They want to get rid of that warrior, and unfortunately retreating the wrong way. Down it goes. That is not how Rockers beat warriors. Quite the opposite, in fact. However, that tick is how Glaze... And there are the selected Glaze right now. 11 seconds left. Those Glaze should be able to get there in time. That is how Glaze get rid of sight. Well, get rid of warriors. By way of ticks. Down goes the scythe, and... Two, one second left to get rid of the warrior! Zero seconds left, and that warrior, not within the tick, but... Well, not within the EMP, I should say. But still gone. That warrior still goes down. And another tick gets rid of a few more defenders. Allowing the Rockos to get rid of the slight creeping wall here. But like I said, that is a distraction. That Anarchid is really over-investing in that southwest side of the map. I don't think Hokomoko realizes it, though. That's the thing. Hokomoko is getting an air switch. They are getting some ravens. If they go towards the main base and try to take that out, I mean... Not a bad idea to get rid of the caretakers. Anything else is, the, is a pretty bad idea. Getting rid of the metal extractors directly is generally the best idea, though I think what's going to happen is that these are going to go down to the southwest, try to take out this entire area. Possibly try to take out Anarchid's commander. That would be a bit of a blow. That would actually make Hokomoko ahead economically if that were to happen. However, Hokomoko coming with their own sides, well, hey, why not? It's been working out de actually... Better than I think for Anarchy. It's still not working out especially well. Not pushing a whole lot, but still. Hokomoko does have a larger non-cloaked army. Larger, more regular army. And that's been working out pretty nicely. In fact, Hokomoko doing a very nice push here. Does spot out that Anarchid's going for air as well. So Hokomoko fully aware of what's going on here. And Anarchid has... Well, bombed out one of the glaives. But these sides able to go in. See what's going on. And probably see, at this point finally, that Anarchid has very little in their main base for defense extremely little, and they have a nice juicy fusion reactor too. Send three bombers there and smash it up. And it looks like that is exactly what Hokomoko was planning on doing. Possibly not quite to the fusion plant, but definitely to other stuff. Size appear to be just acting as spotters, not going in for an attack themselves. No, they are going for an attack themselves. They are revealing things. They are actually going straight for the fusion plant. Bit of a risky strategy, because that is just the one thing they're going to kill. Because the fusion plant is going to go off, kills the size, kills pretty much everything to the north side of the base. And with this many ravens, one of these factories has to go down. The air factory, the better choice. Good choice there, Hokomoko. And takes that out in pretty much one stroke. There we go. Air factory is down. And Anarchid, they have lost quite a lot of firepower. Being that they have just lost the air factory, they can build anti-air in their main factory, in the Klokobot factory. And they are rebuilding, of course. They still have 40 metal and actually have been accessing. Hokomoko, however, has been using up their metal quite efficiently. As we can see, that's been paying off as well. Anarchid going for a bit of a counterattack. But even then, Anarchid is about to lose their commander. Yep, down goes their commander as well. Anarchid now falling behind economically. Reclaim is helping out with that, though. There was a lot of Reclaim to work with in their main base. So that is helping out. But still, Anarchid, surprisingly, still slightly ahead of Hokomoko. I'm not quite sure how that's happening, because Hokomoko has a ton of Reclaim to work with. It looks like Anarchid has been creeping forward along the southwest side, taking out Metal Extractor after Metal Extractor. But now Hokomoko has all these Ravens for defense. Hokomoko just needs to pay attention. It's going to be a bit of a multitasking chore. But they are going to have to do if they want to survive. That's where they've invested their effort. That's where they invested their resources. That's what they need to do to defend against this. And it looks like they are, in fact, going for exactly that, which is good to see. And Sides as well coming in for additional defense. As well as targeting the Sides. Getting rid of that nice shot there, Hokomoko. So Anarchid, still not quite in the best position, but does have the Air Factory rebuilt. Getting some Swifts post-haste. They absolutely have to do that. 
And at the same time, Hokomoku is prepping for an attack from the northeast side. While a chainsaw being built up by Anarchid, and Hokomoku going to spot that with this glaive. There is nothing to stop that, and that glaive forces the cancellation, or at least postponement, of that chainsaw. Probably not destruction, possibly destruction though, because there is another army coming in behind that, as well as sides coming in from the southwest. And this side, man, seriously, let's just go right here. Just take out the metal extractor directly, why not? There we go, perfect! Okamoko is doing a lot of things right, firing on all cylinders. I mean, Anarchid is getting a lot of pressure here, and these sides completely unmolested. They can continue along, they can take out these defenders, take out the metal extractors behind them. I mean, this entire expansion is pretty much doomed, and that's what Hokomoko is going for. Actually, Hokomoko looks like they're going for the solar line instead. That's going to expose them. And the north side, however, Hokomoko is starting to lose out a bit. The Rock was not able to deal a huge amount of damage thanks to the sides that are stopping them. But there are Glades coming in for support, which will be able to get rid of the sides. And a tick as well. That tick goes... Oh! Takes out one of the Rockos and one of the Glaives instead. That's not what was desired. However, a Scythe coming in here. One of the Scythes does go down to the Defenders. The other Scythe able to take out the Defenders and Dick. Get rid of this entire expansion. Anarchid losing out a lot of economy. And Hokomoko has not lost a lot of economy recently. So Hokomoko is getting slightly ahead. But Anarchid actually doing pretty well. Despite all that the Chainsaw has been built up. Zeus and Rocco try and get rid of it. Zeus able to get close enough. But the thing is... Okay, if the Zeus is able to stun this out, that's huge. If the Zeus stuns this out, can it stun it out? No, apparently it cannot. Unfortunately for it, because if it could stun it out, the bombers could come in and take that out completely. Now, I should point out that the chainsaw does have enough of a fire range to protect the main base. And it definitely will. That's that's no joke anti-air. Those ravens come near, they're going to die. I think, I think Wyverns can deal with it. Ravens cannot. And the Stardust as well is also bad news. These sides trying to do what they can, but honestly, it's not easy to get rid of this. However, this one side will be able to just get inside of the main base, and Hokomoku will be able to see what Anarchid's up to, as Hokomoku is just tearing apart these solar plants. Yeah, Hokomoku can actually take care of this warrior pretty efficiently. And more forces coming in. Hokomoku is still streaming forces in. Anarchid's starting to get a lot of reclaim to work from. They haven't really built that up, but this Stardust is providing them a lot of reclaim, as is... Well, just the sheer amount of forces coming in and dying. At this point, I would think Hokomoku would probably want to switch over to... Hmm. I almost want to say heavy tanks just to have the firepower to get through the Stardust here. I build one Reaper or something, but that's a lot of resources just for that. I mean, those sides, if they were to attack this directly, or just go... F if you go by line of sight, if you go behind the chainsaw and take it out, make sure your units are not getting close to that Stardust. The Stardust can't actually hit them. The Stardust... Its attack range is fairly low, so pretty much any unit, I think even Glaives. Oh yeah, actually Glaives very, very barely, probably would have to use the shadow of the, the chainsaw itself, but could very barely hit that chainsaw without its artist hitting them. And the side's coming in here as well, Hokomoko continue to apply pressure on all sides. Not much there though, like I said, Defender Nest, but at least Hokomoko well aware of what's going on in the southwest and that it's probably not worth going for. And Anarchid has very completely defended themselves. I think more Zeus's wouldn't be a bad idea just to break through these lines. They do tank a lot of damage. I mean, 2400 health is nothing to laugh at. Especially, well, 375 DPS. That's, okay, that's also nothing to laugh at. However, the southwest side is being attacked, and it's being gotten rid of pretty efficiently. Okamoku getting rid of that Defender's Nest, although not quite splitting out the fire of the Ravens as efficiently as they could, but still, getting rid of that Defender's Nest and taking out the southwest, Anarchid really has not been applying pressure at all this game. They've been playing defensive, getting a lot of reclaim, but then so is Hokomoko, actually. Hokomoko has taken pretty much the same reclaim as Anarchid. There isn't a whole lot that Anarchid's done to really get back at this. And Hawks can be in trying to get rid of the Swifts. I should point out, though, that Swifts do actually operate kind of as riots thanks to those missiles. It's a little tricky, but Swifts do not get exactly hard countered by Hawks. To some extent, it's Swifts pretty much dominate the air, actually. It's a little bit wonky right now. But yeah, the Swifts are probably going to win out pretty much any fight. And down goes that Stinger, so pretty much any ground forces can come in to deal with it. But that's a lot of Ravens that have gone down to take that out. It's kind of why, that's why I said it wasn't worth it. I mean, yeah, they might take it out, but that's a lot of Ravens that die in the process. And even then, this entire area has not been taken out. And that Chainsaw, if they're going to sacrifice those Ravens, they should have sacrificed them to destroy pretty much everything in the main base. Get rid of the fusion reactors. Like, take out the fusion reactors. Take out the factories as a result. The fusion reactors right next to the factory will take out everything here. Take out all the rectors, I mean conjurers, take out all the caretakers. Everything would die. And it would die horribly. But that's not what's going to happen because Hokomoko has lost all of their ravens. Every last one of them has died. 
I mean, there are some ticks coming in here trying to get rid of pretty much everything. And these forces trying to basically bypass the defenses that Anarchid has set up. Which, as long as they go north enough, isn't an impossible task, actually. The Stardust is able to get them in range, though. Yeah, it, there's quite a bit of space in the north. This entire area right here, actually. That is free space. That can be just taken. And another Stardust, while it's being built, not actually doing all that much. It really isn't. And Glaive's coming in to get rid of more and more Conjurers, which isn't a bad idea once again. But really, this is one of those strange cases where going for the main base is actually probably the best course of action. Although, less and less so due to the fact that there are Lotuses there. More defenses have been built. But even then, Anarchid is kind of, is pretty much bouncing back. After getting rid of the Ravens, Anarchid has had a huge amount of room to bounce back. And that's what I said. The Southwest is not worth it. Losing the Ravens loses pretty much all of the power that Hokomoko could project remotely. Like, even when the chainsaw was allowed to be built, once that was finished, at that point, Hokomoko had very little chance to actually do anything. The best they could do, take out this fusion reactor if they even found out about it. Like, continue scouting with size. That early scouting was great. It was wonderful that they did that. If they continued to do that throughout the game, they would have had a much easier time. Or, apply well, actually, the gremlins aren't the best idea. But yeah, coming to the sides, and gremlins work as well, but sides are not as likely to hit things. Or if they do, they're going to hit them usefully. But yeah, if they get rid of the fusion reactors, that would take out most of this base. It wouldn't kill everything. The fusion reactor explosion doesn't actually say how much their explosion damage is. No, it doesn't. Okay, yeah, I don't know how much their explosion damage is. Doesn't really say. Anyway, doesn't matter. The point, well, it does matter. It matters a whole lot. I'm a little disappointed the tooltip doesn't show that. However, since I can't know that, it's not something I can really use about. Doesn't matter. The chainsaw, while gone, doesn't say anything about the swifts. The swifts are still in the air, and there are still very many of them. Anarchid is continuing to construct them pretty much non-stop, or not pretty much, they are constructing them non-stop, by definition. It is on infinite repeat build. They are not stopping, and Anarchid now has three times the economy of Hokomoko. Yeah, losing those Ravens, that was a big deal. That's given Anarchid a huge amount of room to breathe. That's given Anarchid this territory back, because there wasn't a whole lot of force projection that could be really mustered. Hokomoko doesn't have much to counter from here. They are going for Hawks their own, but at this point, it's not working out too well. Looks like the air factor is actually on lower priority. Yeah, the air factor is on low priority. So those hawks are not being... I think this is the only hawk. Yeah, that's the second hawk. There's only one hawk in the air right now. That is not going to get rid of half a dozen swifts. Sorry, not half a dozen. A dozen and a half. My mistake. There are 18 swifts in the air. That will not go down quickly. That will not go down easily. And they can attack ground very effectively. Like I said, swifts are fairly powerful units. It's not something they can easily be reckoned with. And a few of them going around to deal with that Hawk, which will go down very shortly because of that. Another Hawk in here for support, but really that Swift is... Are those Swifts... A few of them are going to die. Actually, quite a few of them are going to die. In fact, this is working out fairly well for Hokomoko, but like I said, not very well at all overall. Hokomoko now on the defensive side and not able to really push back, unfortunately. This is kind of where the player skill comes in and becomes very important, because Anarchid has a lot more experience defending in situations like this than Hokomoko does, I'm sure. Just as a function of playtime. So Anarchid, and Anarchid obviously in a much better position with all the swifts in the air. Not a whole lot that can be easily done by Hokomoko to get that back. I mean, building a bunch of hawks and swifts themselves, maybe. But it's kind of tough. I think at this point it's about two dozen. Yeah, 26 swifts for Anarchid. And this one hawk being constructed slowly for Hokomoko. In fact, everything's going into this chainsaw. Not a bad idea to prevent more harassment, though Hokomoko really needs to rebuild their economy. I think that's one of the biggest things Hokomoko has not been doing, is rebuilding their destroyed metal extractors. And trying to retake that territory. And Hokomoko realizes that there isn't much they can do over this point, because I'm kind of speaking historically, that's something they should have done throughout the game, and haven't done. It is a common newer player mistake. I do it all the time, and I haven't, I'm not that new of a player either, but it's like, it's a common mistake. Yeah, when, when you've been attacked, you've lost metal extractors, try to take them back. Very important. But anyway, that is game. Hokomoko does throw in the towel, but had a really good showing there. Best thing I can recommend for Hokomoko to do is continue that Scythe harass, or Scythe or Gremlin. Gremlin on whole fire would have been fine. Cloak unit, scouting. Figure out what's going on in their base. Figure out what they're up to. Figure out where you can attack. Figure out what's going on in their expansions in general. I mean, this expansion attack was very well done. A lot of the attacks they did were quite good. They actually avoided the Southwest for the most part. The big mistake was when they tried to take it out. They got overconfident that they could take it out and didn't really need to and lost everything doing so. Had they invested that into destroying this fusion plant, like three bombers surviving would have destroyed the fusion plant. Especially if they'd gone around here, they would have died on the return trip. 
but they've gotten rid of the fusion plant, possibly both fusion plants. Heck, they possibly would have gotten rid of all the factories as well. If they, had, if the remaining ones had just bombed out the factories with the remaining health. I mean, it's 4,000 each. Yeah, that probably would have done it. Unfortunately, that is not what happened. Hokomoku did waste their bombers. That is a thing that you might do. That's the thing one does. Yeah, that's what I'd say is the scouting was good. The bombing run choices were really good at first. The harassment choices were really good up until the point that the Southwest was attacked. That was the first big mistake, and like I said, it was up to one big mistake. One player getting the upper hand, and that would seal the deal. And it did. And I think that's going to be it for any other games. There weren't really any other replays I had on the on my list. I mean, that was a request, we, request replay. Evidently, I am becoming incapable of enunciating properly. Yes, that was a request. I don't know if there's any other games that I know of offhand. That would be good for casting. So, I think this is probably going to be it. Yeah, this is going to be it. So, thank you all for watching. Sorry that's a little bit shorter than usual. I mean, it's not my typical analysis cast since I wasn't... I didn't have enough time to go through to do an analysis, but... Honestly, I don't know if I really needed to pause that game to analyze it. There probably could have been little things here and there. But I think it was pretty straightforward what happened. It was great pressure, great harassment until there was a bit of overconfidence and it lost out. So anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.